Hello everyone, today we will be discussing some considerations in terms of psychological assessment in their historical, cultural, and legal or ethical ones, okay? So today, we will be discussing history of psychological testing and assessment. So we will uh, discuss how the psychological testing and assessment developed over time. So the story of psychological testing can be tracked in China in their practice of choosing civil servants or government employees. So it is believed that testing programs first came from China as early as 2200 BCE to select the government servants. Of course, this practice of testing has some flaws, especially who on would be accepted for the available position. So the process of test may be compromised by testing errors and some malpractice. The simple forms of testing allow the officials to be examined to determine if they are fit for office. Such testing was modified and refined over the centuries until written exams were introduced in Han Dynasty. Of course, the testing practices failed to incorporate some measures of good characteristics of psychometric tests, such as validity, reliability, and standardized procedures. Then, during the Song Dynasty, the emphasis was placed on knowledge of classical literature. So test takers who would demonstrate their command of the classics were perceived as having acquired the wisdom of the past. So they were therefore entitled to a government position. So due to some dynasties, uh, testing was slightly suspended and government positions were given to family members, friends, or simply they are being sold. So in the present day, of course, this practice has evolved and we have uh, several approaches to consider in testing uh, with a diverse field in psychology. Okay? In the Philippines, we also conduct civil service examinations to qualify government uh, servants. The same goes with different professionals right? in their field of expertise that is uh, through licensure examination. Okay? So aside from the Eastern uh, practice of testing, rating scales were likely originated from the contributions of Gallen. As we might know, rating scales are widely used in psychological testing to quantify subjective psychological variables, particularly in personality testing. So just like any other proponents, Gallen tried to identify categories of personality types. With this, he proposed that there is either overabundance or deficiency in some bodily fluid, such as the blood, the yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm, all right? So that can determine a personality, okay? Along with parapsychology or uh, practices, it merged with other paramedical uh, practices to treat mental illnesses, such as threatening up until Middle Ages. Right? So practitioners way back then were likely to use poor evidence-based practices such as bloodletting and purging, isolations, and asylums in 17th century. So, and even in uh, around 1940s, practitioners utilized procedures such as lobotomy and many others. So during the Middle Ages, Mental health was stigmatized with the question, who is in league with the devil, all right? And various measurement procedures were devised to address this question. It would not be until Renaissance that measurement in the modern sense began to emerge. So the first man, uh, person to devise and apply rating skills for psychological variables was Christian Thomasius. Okay, so Thomas's primary concern was analysis of man's deference to authority, deference to authority, and it was an investigation into psychology of human behavior. That became a challenge to him to all establish 
corners of social and political life. In the early days of German Enlightenment thought, now Thomas felt that there were four kinds of affective domains okay, in human behavior. And that one of the, uh, these four always is student in dominant relationship to the other three on a scale of five to 60 with the most dominant at highest end and the most recessive at the lowest end of this scale. So by the 18th century, we have Richard von Wolf, which had been, uh, psycho which had considered psychology as a science and psychological measurement as a specialty with that science. It is not an accident that we are utilizing statistical methods and to interpret the data that we gathered from personality inventories, intelligence tests, and making sense of the qualitative data to be correlated with the quantitative, quantitative constructs, okay? So we are grateful that we are now utilizing scientific methods to explain mental health and not by just some barbaric and some brutal methods and some parapsychology um, practices, okay? So those uh, work like Psychologia Empirica and Psychologia Rationalis, he distinguished the parts of philosophy on the basis of differences in subject matter, okay? So the theoretical philosophy was divided into ontology or being in general. We also have natural theology or a uh, subject about God. And we also have rational psychology or the topic about human souls. We also have general cosmology or world in general. We also have dogmatic physics or material bodies. Uh, the first four taken together constitute the metaphysics. Okay, so ontology was given to top position in the deductive hierarchy of the sciences because of the uh, complexity of the factual information relating to man and physical world. Okay, so who added the special disciplines of empirical psychology and experimental physics as inductive preparations for the principles in these areas. This is how the psychometric testing evolved uh, with their age, okay? Okay, we also have some practices in uh, psychology, no, uh, also known as the physiognomy and uh, phrenology. So these two right here are uh, the individuals who are known for these practices, okay? So physiognomy is based on the notion that we can judge a person uh, inner characteristics by judging their outward appearance or assessing their outward appearance. So by judging the facial features or uh, the way our head is uh, molded, okay? So it represents an early form of psychological testing. So interest in physiognomy can be dated back to the fourth century. Now, so physiognomy remained popular for centuries and laid the foundation for the more specialized form of quackery, all right? Like phrenology. Physiognomy practice like Lombroso's approach. According to Lombroso, the crim uh, criminal appearance was just based on inherited physiognomy, such as nose or a skull shape, okay? But also could be judged through superficial features such as tattoos on the body, okay? So however, his school of thought was only uh, abandoned in Italian universities and curriculum after World War I. Now, phrenology, okay, it is about reading bumps on the head or the founding phrenology is usually attributed to France, to Joseph Gall. Now he argued that brain is the organ of sentiments and faculties and that these capacities are localized 
to the extent that a faculty was well developed and uh, some of them were not. The corresponding components of the brain would be enlarged and in turn form a bone because the skull conform, uh, conforms the shape of the brain. Okay, so the psychograph, as you can see right here, is the machine that can measure this uh, practice of phrenology, which is made by Henry Lavery, okay, in 1931. So he is a self-described profound thinker, and he spent his next 26 years endeavoring uh, the psychograph together with Frank White, a businessman finan uh, who financed this venture. So as you can see right here, um, this machine uh, consisted of mechanical parts. This machine was used to measure uh, mental faculties which were rated one as a deficient through five, that is uh, very superior. Now, so that there were a uh, hundred of possible statements, statements that can be almost all uh, unlimited number of possible combinations. So with this practice of psychological measurement, phrenology in Europe had been abandoned. So for the short success of the psychograph, uh, it just lasted until mid 30s when the company closed because of its uh, increasing skepticism and declining uh, income. 